What's going on Port fans, welcome back to another video on my channel and today we're going to be looking at the 2021 trade period. It's that time of the year, it's the off season. We're going to be looking to see what we can bring into the club and what we can let go from the club to improve our list for 2022. It's a massive next couple of weeks with the free agency and the trade period to get underway. A lot of silliness in the silly season. We've heard it plenty already. Trade Radio even started today and I've seen a few crazy, crazy trades uh, being put uh, out there to uh, get some opinions, some feedback. So I'm going to give you my thoughts on this year's trade period and see what we can do to improve Port Adelaide's list in 2022. Firstly, I'm going to ask the question, what do we need? Well, a lot of people will have a few different opinions on what we need and what we can improve on in each and every area. Um, looking at our defensive unit, I think it's pretty rock solid. Uh, with Tom Jonas, um, Aaliyah Aaliyah and Trent McKenzie down there, mixed with Ryan Burton, DBJ and Dan Houston and co. running off the half-back line. You do have the likes of Tom Clurry also, who is on the cusp of getting a selection and many half-backs that run through that list. So I think that's a pretty well-kept group and nothing will too much change in that aspect. In the midfield, you do have the two uh, big guns in Wines and Boak with mixing with Drew. Then you have... Um, your other likes of uh, Houston, who does run through there. I've seen Connor Rosie, Zach Butters, all of these players that rotate through there. But we don't have a third or fourth set midfielder, um, and it's not really um, a place that we've been uh, blessed with in terms of a lot of depth or a lot of ready-made midfielders ready to go. So there could be a few targets out there in the free agency and the trade period that we could look at, and especially, especially a few that have been delisted. Um, and then you go into the forward line and you've got your big Charlie Dixon, you've got Todd Marshall, Mitch Georgiatis and all the smalls, you know, the, the Rosie, the Butters, um, the Fantasia uh, and the countless others that are mixing through there. Um, and there's plenty of small forwards that we have um, that are capable of standing up to that task. So it's the big guys that you've got to look at and I think um, overall we're pretty pretty covered in that area. Um, and then the Ruck middle, Scotty Lysette mixing with Laddams. Um, and Sam Hayes is also there. Looking at the changes we've already made, and I can't seem, see too many after this getting made as well. We've got um, already a few delistings with Joel Garner and um, Hamish Hartlett, unfortunately, leaving the club through a delisting. Um, you've still got Robbie Gray, Stevie Motlop, and a couple of others that need a, um, a contract, but they will no doubt get their one-year deals done and dusted. Riley Bonner is another one. and um, A few trade targets we've been put up um, with Pete Laddin being, according to multiple reports and sources I've heard, has been told to explore his options. He is contracted, so no doubt he'll he'll be available for next year. Um, whether or not we keep him, that's going to be something um, to look at. And there's a lot to play with in terms of um, his, you know, his potential. And I think he could honestly earn us a second round pick if we do look to trade him. Um, I personally would keep him. I think he, he works really well with Lysette and uh, whilst I think his forward craft could do with a little bit more work, we do need a helping hand with Charlie Dixon um, and Todd Marshall doesn't really cut that out when it comes to contested the contested area. So an option to trade at Laddins is there but I'd prefer to keep him if that was um, if that is an option which I think it definitely is. We also lost uh, Tom Rockliffe and Tyson Goldsack. Goldsack was really never um, an AFL prospect, he was always, uh, always a depth player and um, he was definitely going to be one of those um, that were purely made for the sample on the list just in case our injury woes got that deep, which I hope, well, pretty close. Um, I reckon he was on a couple of occasions because our injuries were pretty bad at one stage. So um, he's gone um, to do a new adventure. Same with Tom Rockliffe, unfortunately, his injuries caught up with him. So Nothing can be done there. We're going to get um, plenty of picks coming through. We've got pick 16, which is our first draft pick for the year. But then we don't have anything till 60. So I would like to fill the void in between because I think we can have a couple of targets going into the draft. And we'll get to that draft um, in a few weeks' time when it does come to, uh, around that time. But looking at the prospect of what we can bring into the club, um, we obviously missed out on Jordan Dawson, which, to be honest, is a win for the Crows, as they say, but I don't think he was really needed. Um, he, he was more of a half-back flanker, you know, a wing type, and we've got plenty of those that can cover uh, that that um, that position. So our, our list is pretty settled um, across the board, but looking in terms of the midfield, I think the midfield is the one key aspect I'd love to add a couple of more players to, bring in a bit of extra depth whilst also developing a few 
um, you know, for players from within. And Connor Rosie's been one prospect that's been looked at. Zach Butters um, definitely can take his game to another gear. He's obviously had an injury riddled season. And um, these blokes have got to start to set the tone. It can't just be Wines and and Boak. Um, and Robbie Gray's not going to play as much time in the midfield every year that he keeps playing. So. These players have got to stand up in these situations. Dan Houston is probably one for mine that um, can move the ball really well. His kicking is elite. His, his disposal efficiency has been rewired up, and that's something that we've lacked in the midfield. His delivery inside 50 is one of the best, at, if not the best, at the club. So when you're looking at trades, what do you look at? Do you look at a midfielder that's going to be another ball inside? Maybe. Um, do you want something that's more of a complete package? I targeted. We've got a bit of money in the chest. So I targeted Josh Kelly. I thought he was perfect. He can win his own ball in the contested areas. Smooth mover with the uh, with the footy and reminds me a lot of Scott Pender, but he's got a bit more pace as well. And um, But he is obviously signed up with the GWS uh, Giants now. Do you look at someone like a Luke Dunstan who played unreal for St Kilda in the 11 or 12 games that he played in 2021? Didn't get offered a contract. Might be someone to bring in um, and hopefully look at. There's been talks Tom Mitchell is lurking about. Um, from Hawthorne, so that could be an option uh, to come to Port Adelaide. I don't, I, we have a lot of, um, apparently a lot of room in the in the salary cap, but I don't think uh, a lot to play with in terms of draft picks or players. Um, and then you've got to look at our own list and maybe put up a couple more trade targets. Maybe Sam Pear Pepper, who's on, on that verge of the uh, of the best 22. Maybe you look at him. Maybe Riley Bonner does become a target to trade. Um, and you know, there's, there's a couple of other players in there as well that, a lot of people have been really pushing to get traded. Todd Marshall's another one. Uh, I personally think keeping Todd uh, is, is is a necessity, um, not because of the way he's performed, but purely for structure aspects, and I don't think anyone can play that role any better. I just would love to see him improve a lot more. And that goes to the flip side. You know, We're targeting Jeremy Finlayson, apparently has done a medical at Port Adelaide. What role does he play if he comes into the club? Not entirely sure, but maybe a trade between um, between GWS and Port in terms of you know Jeremy Finlayson, Pete Laddams, a couple of picks. If we can pick up Finlayson and a second round pick and, and then trade off a couple of others and you know, really use that point system to our advantage uh, and make both parties happy or bring in a third club, I think that might be the main trade that we look at. Um, and, and that could, I think, I've, I've enjoyed Finlayson's work. He's really aggressive at the footy. He, he attacks it. Not the smartest of players, but definitely is a genuine goal kicker. Can kick goals, can win his own footy, can take a contested mark, and he would help out Charlie Dixon so much in our forward 50. So it, that's definitely an option there. But in terms of everything else, there's not a lot uh, more you can say for our trade period. I think we're pretty set in terms of our list. I just hope, um, yeah, I just hope there's a few targets in mind and there could be a couple of surprises along the way. And I just hope we don't do anything silly. Keep our pick 16 in the draft and and, and, and use that uh, to pick up a quality pick because I know it's a quality draft this year. I, I don't really rate um, you know, trading these first round picks now, especially when we're in a position that we can you know, pick a player here, pick a player there uh, as we keep moving forward. We've got a young group. You know, We've got a building success. We are building success. Um, whether or not we get there past the prelim, not sure, but um, this crop, this crop of players that we have at the moment, the young group, the young core, that are building within, um, are definitely going to put us in a good position in the next five years or so. So, um, next year is probably the last gasp for a premiership, and then we'll probably take a couple of years where we just reset a little bit, like we did in 2019. I still think we're going to be a final side, and then advance forward and be that genuine five, ten year prospect where we're always in the eight, battling for the top four, and. Ch uh, pushing for premierships. Let me know in the comments below, Port fans, what you think of this trade period. A lot of trade talk going around, a week out from the trade period starting. Free agency as well, there's plenty of targets out there. Don't think there's a lot that we're gonna be looking at, but a few surprises can definitely be along the way. I trust uh, Mr. Cripps and his crew uh, with the list management and, and the football operations. They've been fantastic for the last five, 10 years now, and I think they'll put us in good stead when it comes to uh, this trade period once again. Full faith in the club. Let's see what happens this trade period. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content coming this off-season. It's going to be massive. Thank you for watching. My name is Anthony, and as always, Gunther.